Hey everyone, and welcome to iOS Genius on the YouTube channel. Today we're going to go over how to use AST 2.0 version, which normally Apple owners was only able to have access to it for a few a few years at least, I would think. Uh, so now that I've finally gained access to it, I've been approved to it, as you can see in this wonderful email down here at the bottom center. It says, my access, I've been, congratulations, I've been approved for Toolkit 2.0 version. Click here to launch, so I'm going to just launch this. This is basically the login page of where you want to log in. And I already ran one device, and I want to show you how to run a device, which is pretty cool. Normally, you'll either send an email, send a text, or do a URL uh, to the device, or the device visiting a URL like a website, and it will connect to the AST and do it from there. I do have another video on YouTube that you can check under the GSX, how to use AST2. I'll put a link to this video, and then you can be able to see how the other way to, to do it within GSX. So we're going to go to do it, sign in through here, through the signing in to the AST2 version. We're going to go ahead and log in. So now basically it just needs a serial number, the IMEI or MEID. So I've already used a serial number of a device that is just connected to Wi-Fi. The device received the notifications like quite instantly, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, so there's no other interaction needed from the user. Uh, it's just the representative is myself or the other technician that will go through one, two, three, like three steps just to start the process. So let's go ahead and get started. And what we're gonna do here, we're gonna put in the serial number of the RMEI. You wanna put in the reported issue. You can't put in the reported issue until you put in the serial number. All right, so here's my iPad that has just popped up. This is my personal iPad. This is not done through the school district. Uh, but I will test it on a school district as well. So as you can see, it just says iPad. I turned off the cellular data here. Uh, here, cellular data is turned off. So we're going to see about how to run diagnostics on this device. I'm not having any known issues on this device, but we're going to go see what happens. So we're going to move this aside. We're going to go ahead and pop in the serial number. And then it just sends I'm not sure what the technology it is or so forth, how they're actually sending it to your device, but when you put in the serial number, it just does it. So DMPR99GTH256. So once you put that, you put in customer reported a problem. Whatever you put here in this AST, in the GSX or the AST sign in in the web GUI, um, what happens is that this information actually communicates with Apple directly. And then, so say for an example, I go to the Apple Store and I just type in foul language in here, okay? And uh, I put in all the bad words in here. They will see it on their end. So they'll know someone's not either putting it right or they're probably not doing it properly. So I would say do it properly because that might ruin your account or get you banned uh, or rejected from your account. Um, so, uh, we're going to say, uh, uh, we'll just say slow performance, and as you can see, it pops up running slow and freezing. It pops up anything, that specific word, slow, is coming up through their knowledge base and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and say, okay, we're going to accept the running slow and freezing. It's an iPad Pro 9.7 inch 2015 model, 2016 model and it works great, so it should not be running slow. So we're gonna go ahead and hit go. And if you give it a second, it pulls up all this information. So you can do the mobile resource inspector, the MRI basically is it's called. You can do a display backlighted color, you can do a display image quality, you can do a display pixel anomaly. So these are all individual tests that you can do. The mobile resource inspector pretty much does it all. But if you want to be more granular, you want to go more detailed, then you can do the backlit color, the image quality. Basically, it, it reverts the screen to a backlit color flashing or sh shaping of colors or, you know, uh, we'll see what we can do. So let's do the mobile resource inspector. 
let me shrink this screen here a little bit more so you can see more of the iPad here. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to shrink it a little bit more. Yeah, looks like we take off that side, but that's fine. On the left side, we have no problem with that. So let's do the mobile resource inspector. Click on this. And then now you want to run the diagnostics. So it's basically telling you reconnect the device to AST2 is basically navigate to your settings. So we're in our settings. You want to select on privacy at right down here. And then on the right side, you want to select on the bottom right, which is diagnostic and usage. And then you'll see in the center, uh, the AST is going to show. There it is. It starts right in the center. Start diagnostic with Apple support. So once you select that, it pretty much will let you read this information, so forth and so forth and you want to go ahead and hit continue and then agree normally this continue and agree is the individual person who owns the device me as a technician work out of my school district i can be able to run this because i manage all these devices now if you work in a store or so forth it's always best to inform your uh, customers this, they have to agree to it just so they understand we're just collecting information on the actual iPad, not your information, not your bank accounts, etc., etc. So we're going to hit agree, and as you can see, it's waiting. And then if you look over here on the left side, it's going through the hardware and software, it's running the mobile inspector. So you can see this pretty much live. This is kind of what happens and goes through the process. So there's that, there's that. And then it keeps running through the test, but it goes through like pretty much the uh, mobile resources. You can see it's doing a compass, it's doing a Bluetooth, it's going to do the gyro, it's going to do any and pretty much all little settings and so forth. So there you go. Testing is complete. On the right side, you see how it says diagnostics. All you have is close and you have history. You can select on history. It'll show you when the last time mobile resource inspector was checked. Other than that, you cannot touch it, tap it, whatever uh, to open it. Uh, you cannot see it as a customer, it will still show waiting. Uh, so now all you have to do here at this point, there's nothing you can do. You can you can try to sh shrink it as I'm doing a five finger uh, shrink here. Uh, but other than that, that's it. You hit close, close diagnostics, and then it goes back to the main screen of the iPad. Now here it's tested and completed here on the left side. So let's go ahead and expand this. You can see on this on the left side here, it's a rose gold, 32 gigs, there's my serial number, and I stated that the issue is running slow and freezing. So if you select on testing complete, it'll show you a little bit more detail. So this is great. So now it shows you the about the device. You can get all detailed information, diagnostic, the system build, uh, what's your time zone, I'm in Chicago, so that actually shows. This is great cycle count. It shows me my cycle count is 177. So that's awesome. You know, uh, you normally see this on a MacBook Pro, uh, you know, something that's a wireless connectivity to portable. Uh, and this is great because it shows me that. So now I'm like, oh, okay, my battery's running low. I need to get, get it replaced or whatever the case is. So it's awesome to have this access. So anyways, uh, you can get the model number, the carrier, uh, how many hours it's been up so it means I physically have not power cycled it off you should kind of power cycle it off every once a week which that's why it shows six days which I do on a weekly basis my current battery level is 35% and which is validated uh, here it's 35 cents in the top right corner uh, then you have your baseband your capacity and my availability and storage space yeah it's a 32 gig it's not really much but hey you know uh, it's sufficient for me. Uh, it also tests if Apple Pay works, the Apple Pay sensor. Uh, it does the battery as well, and it shows you where the physical battery is. So it's past, it's great. If it's under red, it's uh, not going to look good or consume. That's after a long time using it. So I'm going to try to use an old iPad that we have here in the school district, and then we're going to see if this shows the battery condition to even be less or might be more. So let's see, we have Bluetooth. We have camera, rear and front. We have an ESMI, so basically I'm assuming your SIM card. Uh, sensors, your gyro, your compass, barometer, 
ambient light accelerometer. Wow, this actually goes in a lot of detail. This is stuff I never was able to see. I see it over an Apple rep, rep, uh, rep shoulder, but I can never see what it is that they're looking at. Now, you know, I'm seeing all this, so it's, it's totally awesome. So then you have services, bias backup event, um, software, frequently asked uh, crashing apps. It's checked green, so it looks good. Current iOS, 10 to 1. Touch ID, I have Touch ID and I use it on my device. It looks great. And Wi-Fi, oh wow. So that's, that's pretty cool. This is a, a cool way to look up your devices and so forth. And this can be done wirelessly. So like say if uh, a friend or family is in Winnetka, Illinois, and I'm in Chicago, oh, you have any problems with your iPad? Ah, oh, man, you know, uh, instead of me driving all the way over there or you driving over here or you're shipping it back and forth, give me your serial number. Let me run it through. I'll tell you the test right now. And there's a test, there's the information. Uh, that is pretty cool. And then they'll know, oh, yeah, there is something going wrong. Or no, there isn't. And they may not have to make a trip to Apple. Or maybe they do. And, and already this information is sent to Apple. So when you go into the store, hey, I have a friend who's uh, an Apple tech, and he ran the scan on my device, and they look it up. Hey, you're right, it did fail. Okay, let's see what we can do to resolve that. So then it actually cuts less time for you to be in the Apple store because you're waiting in line for, okay, what's going on? What's this, or how's that? Which is all great information. But if you pass that on to me, I can go ahead and put it into the Apple, I don't know, database, or I'm not sure what you can really call this, but an AST basically, and uh, run it. So that's pretty cool. All right, so that's pretty much it in how to do a scan on this. Um, here, as you can see, it has a recording of January 13 because I ran this before, but I didn't run it through here. I ran it through GSX, which I have another video on my channel that you can see how I did it through GSX, but it does not show me this detail information that I just ran now. Now, since it shows up here under the AST 2.0 version, I may be able to see that granular details. And, oh, there you go. This is January 13. Actually, yes, I could. So I can still see it from the past. Let's see where my battery was. Oh, look, my battery's up here. I wonder if my battery has gone lower. It shouldn't really, but let's see. Nah, it's, it looks like it went down a tiny centimeter, millimeter. But that's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. And it keeps logs of all of them on the left side. Now on the left side and the bottom, you can go ahead and hit the plus sign if you want, if you want to start a new device. And then on the bottom left again, you have the USB tool, which is basically a specialty tool that's basically like a USB dongle that goes to your device, but it goes to their physical laptop that has certain software that does the AST as well. So you can click this, and now you see how this pops up. It's a whole different tool service. So I already ordered that device and our peripheral. So I'm just gonna wait till when that arrives and then we'll go ahead and try a new video on how to do the HDI tools and see what additional tools that it provides you. Then you have this wonderful little thing here, which is basically identify all. So you can go ahead and select that. This basically just refreshes and connects with the devices to make sure they're accurate, they're, they are what it is and what this is what it is. Um, go back to diagnostics. Here we have our diagnostic, every diagnosis that it ran. And then here at the very last one here, you have an archive if you want to get rid of these, and then you want to put it in an archive. So let's say if we want to get rid of this one, put this in archive, and it's gone, you know. Um, and then if you want to go to products, you can go to products. Products is basically the same thing. It just shows that you this specific product. You can also show the status if you want. But status again, it's on the left hand side. There's, you're not really seeing any changes. Here's a main screen. Let me change this again, product, most recent. So, and then this little window on the top left closes the sidebar on the left and opens the sidebar. On the top right, you have your name, then you have your account settings. I can select this, but it's gonna show you my SOTU account, which is managed by the school district. So I'm not gonna show that information. All right, other than that, Thanks for visiting Apple at iOS Genius on the YouTube channel. 
and uh, I'll have future videos to see if I can find older devices, see if we can run into more issues to see if there's some kind of solution or a knowledge base. Uh, feel free to subscribe. I'm looking to add more videos as we go and just random iOS devices just to see what comes up, what doesn't, and uh, go from there. And also do these additional testings that appeared for this iPad. Thanks again. Uh, feel free to subscribe, put in your comments, put in your notifications as well. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. And watching Apple iOS Genius on the YouTube channel.